I'm just going to get started. My name is Liz Larson. Even though my little badge here says Andrea Chesley, I'm signed in as my colleague. And um, I'm Assistant Director of Lower School Admissions at Ross School. I'm also a Ross parent. I have two sons who started Ross School in sixth and eighth grade and now are in 11th grade and one is graduated and is in college. Um, and I want to introduce Andy O'Hearn, who is our Head of Operations and Advancement and a college counselor. India Galesi Grant, who is a student in 12th grade and um, Courtney Corvis, who is in our residence life department. And I think that's all the Ross people, right? Yeah. Andy, you wanna go ahead? Oh, uh, well, Andy said if you, if you weren't in a few minutes ago and she said we are recording the session, just so you all know that. And um, I think that's all. So Andy, can go ahead um, and take it away. Sure, absolutely. So I'll just share a little bit. I've been at Ross for a long time. I started here originally in 1998 when the lead class was in t grade 10. Um, and I designed a college counseling program at Ross. And it's still a program that's running today, um, which is fun. And this is my third time I I've been at Ross. My husband um, has been the head of school for five years in 90, 98 to 2003, and he's currently the head of school also. Um, so I'm just gonna start by one, congratulating you all on your acceptance. That's great, I hope we'll see you at this school. It's a very exciting time, um, although this is a very challenging time for all of us right now also, and I certainly wanna recognize that. Um, I'm going to share my screen and take us through a little bit of a PowerPoint about college, um, what colleges are looking for. And um, I have my chat up. So if anybody, actually, will you test chat me, India, just so I can make sure I can see it still? Um, if not, we'll open it right back up after I'm done sharing what I regularly, oh, that's a great question. Um, actually, you reminded me what I did want to say. We are just coming off of a very successful college year. We're very excited. Um, one of the things, we've had a lot of great acceptances all around the world. Um, we have the first time we've had somebody accepted to Duke's campus in China. Um, and we've also had an acceptance at NYU Shanghai. And we've also had an acceptance at Yale. Um, program with National University of Singapore. So it's called Yale and US. Um, so it, along with those, we've had some other great acceptances. India will talk about hers a little in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started with a little presentation to take you through. So I am going to share this. And I just want to start the slideshow. Of course, I moved it too far. Okay, can everybody see it all right? Yep. Okay, great. So I wanted to start out sharing some thoughts because the, the landscape in front of us right now with coronavirus is shifting rapidly. And there are some major impacts on the college counseling process. One of those impacts is I think you're gonna see a lot more flexibility with universities testing programs and with options for testing. Um, I also believe you're going to see more of our testing go online. For example, most non-native English speakers have had to take the TOEFL this year to go to university. And I believe that will change drastically. You will see many, many more universities using the Duolingo test, which you can take at home, on your computer. It's very secure. Um, Harvard used it this year to test it, but you're going to see more testing like that, where somebody can um, take it at home from their own computers. And the other thing I would say to you is preparing for university admissions is really a four-year process It starts in the summer before grade nine. So when we're looking back and we're talking with you, we're gonna be talking about that four year story that you're preparing. So in this new, in this new environment, we're, we're 
starting to think, what will the universities be looking at? What's going to be important to them? So I'm gonna share a survey that was just released um, it, it, of all of the top admissions directors in the United States. They've done this survey for a number of years. It hasn't shifted, but it's going to shift moving forward. The most important thing in the United States for universities is that you take a rigorous and challenging curriculum. Now, that could include AP uh, classes. It may not include AP classes. It may include independent studies. It might not. But the main thing is that in the school where you are, to take the most challenging courses for you. At the same time, the second most important thing are grades. So you don't want to take courses that are too hard. You want to be able to do well in them, but you do want to challenge yourself. Now, some of you are not native English speakers, and one of the things you should know is that in your case, they're gonna look for you to be going up as you become more accomplished in academic English. Um, but the combination of taking challenging courses and getting good grades are the two most important things in the process right now. Um, I'm going to say something else. I don't know. I was going to say something else. Any questions about that, anybody? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, what you probably may not quite understand at Ross is that we have a core curriculum. And so all of our students take the core curriculum, their history, uh, their cultural history, their English, their integrated arts, etc. cetera. Uh, science is a part of the core. Um, math is usually a year-long course, um, et cetera. So it's the choices you make in your electives, in particular at Ross, that allow you to focus your challenge in a certain direction. So that if you want to make a film or you're interested in photography or the arts or dance, those are the choices you're going to make in your electives to challenge yourself in your areas of strength. Okay? Test scores, as I said right in the beginning, this is a big question right now. I think you're going to see a lot of changes um, on the testing front. The fourth most important part, part of your application process is the essay. Probably not a surprise because this is where you can tell an admissions officer what makes you you. And that's really the thing they're looking for. They're looking for it to be highly personal, to I always say to the kids, if somebody else could write this, it's not the right one. No one should be able to write your essay but you. It, it, it's, it's answering the question of what makes you different from all of your close friends? What is it about you that's unique? Because everybody has unique uh, things. And I remember one year, uh, one of the seniors wrote about how quirky she was. It was a fantastic essay and she went on to Vanderbilt, so she got into a very strong school, um, but it was really interesting. So you, that's where you're really thinking and we're really working with you both in your 11th grade English class and in your 11th grade grade level program. Um, we push into that in the spring of your junior year to make sure you're getting your common application done, you're working on your personal statement, you're learning how to use our software, um, and you're uh, preparing for your senior project, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, but we do a lot to support you and take you through that. So hopefully by the time you go home in the summer before your senior year, you have really put together your list, your applications are basically done, you're just polishing and refining. Um, I'm gonna just close the door a second, hang on. trying to do wash, one of the things of working at home. <laughs> All right. So the next thing that is really important and that you all should be thinking about are your activities. What do you do when you have time to yourself? What are your activities saying about you? Um, and your activities can be anything. Whatever 
you choose to do in your free time is going to be part of that story though. And it's an important part of the story for the colleges. Um, you could be an athlete, you could be a musician. They're looking though, again, for not, not a whole giant list, but they're looking for the quality of those activities. Have you taken something and taken it to another level, either given back to the community, developed a club, something like that. So they're looking for you to, to show a, a commitment of some sort and growth. So activities are very important. They're also looking for leadership. And a lot of kids will say to me, you know what? I don't know if I'm really a leader. It doesn't, it doesn't have to mean you're president of your class at all. Of course, that's leadership. But it's what you have done with what you are interested in to make a difference, to grow yourself. Maybe you've even chosen to go to a summer school program um, in your junior year, or you decide to travel to China to immerse yourself in the language. Um, they're also looking for what you're going to be bringing to them and then in your new campus. So it's leadership wears a lot of different hats. Universities are also looking for diversity. And right now, coming off of the varsity, what we call in the United States, the varsity blues of last year's scandals, I think they're also very much looking for people who may have been disadvantaged in some way um, in the college admissions process. That's certainly a trend we've seen in the early decision rounds this year. Um, but diversity comes in a lot of different ways. And each of you will bring a different aspect of diversity to a, to a college campus. Um, the bottom line for that is they're looking for kids that are interesting and that are going to add another dimension to the university. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you're a white boy from New York City, you're not gonna get in. You're, that child's gonna bring a different type of diversity. Perhaps they're an athlete, um, whatever it might be, okay? And last, I think this is the last one. Maybe I did nine. The eighth one is intellectual curiosity. And this is where I'm gonna have India talk a little bit also, um, because I think you're looking at how do you demonstrate that you're intellectually curious? It's not really an easy thing to do, but we talked about those free time choices. What do you do in your free time? And sometimes on college applications, you see these crazy questions like, what show did you watch last? What's your favorite movie? What was your favorite book? Um, they'll ask like those little one-liners sometimes, but there are some things at Ross that I think really help our kids stand out um, in the college admissions pools, in the competitive pools. There are three things in particular. There's our Field Academy program, there's our Modernity project in grade 11, and there's the Senior project in grade 12. So Field Academy is our mini trimester program. It's three weeks long. And you have a lot of choices to make. We usually offer uh, usually five to seven international trips. There usually is a trip in the United States. And then there are a whole bunch of different um, on-campus options for Field Academy. So I thought maybe India could talk to you a little bit about her Field Academy experiences. Sure. So uh, for my Field Academy experiences at Ross, I mainly chose to stay on campus which I think was kind of a mistake on my part. I definitely would urge you to go on the trips because they are so fantastic and they offer you so many experiences. But if you are the type of person who kind of would prefer to stay here on campus, they also offer a ton of amazing courses that really allow you to dive deeper into a specific subject. So for example, uh, in the past three years, I did one course on campus that was a Chinese literature course where I was able to analyze different pieces of Chinese literature with a group of fluent Chinese speakers. And that really helped to take my Chinese speaking language level to the next level. <laughs> so that was really great. Then the second M term I took was the uh, 
Art and Migration MTERM, another on-campus course, which allowed us to look at different artists' art pieces and kind of emulate them all together. So we created a lot of uh, murals and group projects in the art room. We also traveled to New York City and got to see different artists' studios and the places that they, they work in. So that was really inspiring. And I also was able to explore a different side of myself. I would definitely not call myself an artist. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I don't think that's a strength of mine, but it was really <laughs> fun to kind of <laughs> dive into that world and learn from the best. You know, all of my classmates were fantastic artists and they all taught me how to use oil paint and acrylic and it was just a very different but cool experience that I would not have been able to explore had I been at a different school. So yeah, it's really a fun time because it allows you to explore a lot of different interests and to dive into different areas that you may not have seen yourself uh, experiencing at first. So that is the M-Term experience. <laughs> Great. Liz, did you want to add something about yours? Sorry, I was muted. Um, uh, just to add to that and frame it a little bit. So Field Academy is three weeks between um, second and third trimester. And um, the teachers actually design the courses and the travel experiences. There are on-campus courses and then there are travel courses. And in terms of travel, uh, for instance, this year our trips went to um, Zimbabwe, Cyprus, uh, Cuba, um, Argentina, Argentina and Patagonia. Um, there was a trip that was supposed to go to Japan, but they decided to reroute that to a different place. Um, the Southwest then in the, uh, the U.S. Yeah. Right. Um, the, and the trips can be themed around a cultural exploration, um, a lot of hands-on doing and seeing, um, you know, you'll never catch raw students on a tour bus necessarily. They might be taking a bus from one place to another, but it's never like Big Ben Parliament, you know, you wait the way you see in movies um, on a tour bus or whatever. Um, it's, they're very heavily cultural. Um, a lot of times there are um, community service or volunteer service opportunities. Uh, students have traveled to Fiji and Laos and Cambodia and um, Alaska to Mexico. I mean, like just wild courses that I, I feel like everyone is sort of, you know, a candidate for a National Geographic trip in the future, um, the way we, we create our trips. So it's a very unique program. And it's also, you know, for high school students, it's three weeks long. So if you consider um, that you're going to be kind of in on, on this adventure, f you know, for two weeks plus, you know, some travel time on either end, it's a really immersive experience. I think it's something that really makes our students stand out also because you do have really interesting things to talk about. Um, so it's a, it's a great opportunity and it's something very special at Ross. I remember my daughter when she was in ninth grade went to China to follow the path of the revolution of Mao. And that was a huge learning experience for her. She was the only freshman on a predominantly junior and senior trip. And so it was, she made friends she never would have made that she's still in touch with today. All right, then we have two other things that I think are really unique in our curriculum and in our offerings. And they are two projects. One that takes place in the junior year called the Modernity Project, which is looking at the period of time known as modernity. And it's a, it's a course that, or a project that can tie to the senior project, doesn't have to, but can. And both those projects together can help to tell, give you an opportunity to test what you might be interested in on the college level. And it's quite all right. A lot of times kids say, I remember we had a, a child that was positive he wanted to be a fashion photographer. And for his senior project, he worked with a top fashion photographer. And at the end of it, he said, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so that was a big lesson learned and, and uh, that's fine too. And he wrote a very interesting essay about how he learned he didn't want to go into fashion photography. <laughs> so it was very interesting. Um, any rate, uh, I'll ask India to share with you her modernity project and her senior project. 
Yeah, I think these two projects are really great because they're just another example of how Ross really allows you to run with your interests and to kind of explore different sides of yourselves in depth. For the modernity project uh, taking place in 11th grade, uh, we learned about the time period beforehand in history class, and then we were able to link the history to one of our specific interests. So I had friends that were interested in guns. So they looked at how guns were revolutionized or came about. I had a friend who was interested in dance. So she learned the traditional flapper style of dance and then she videoed herself in a flapper costume. And for my modernity project, I decided to write a novel that trace the life of a girl living during that time period. And it's kind of Forrest Gump in style. So she kind of stumbles upon major figures during that time that at that time hadn't even become famous yet. So it's just a very interesting look at uh, the time period and about you know a young woman emerging uh, during what was a revolutionary era. So that was my modernity project. I didn't link it to my senior project, but I, I was able to explore, you know, the writing side of myself. And from the Modernity Project, I realized that writing really was a skill and strength of mine. And that's why I decided to use it for my senior project. Do you want me to go into that, Andy, or do you want to preface the senior project more? <laughs> um, no, I think you can go into your senior project. Okay. So the senior project is kind of like a culmination of everything you learn at Ross which is really great. It gives you the opportunity to dive deeper into a specific interest of yours and share it with the rest of the Ross community. I kind of view it as like a present that you're leaving with the Ross school before you go. Um, and this was a really great experience for me because again, it allowed me to take all of the interests that I've explored at Ross as a student and, and kind of turn it into a creative project that I could share with not only the Ross School, but Long Island. So for my project, I created two magazines, one in Chinese and one in English, that basically told a story of my experience working alongside Chinese immigrants, either working or interacting alongside Chinese immigrants over the past four years. So it talked about my experience living in Shanghai for a month. It talked about my experience at an immersion program. And it talked about my experience um, working at two Chinese nail salons over the summer as a translator. So it was really a culmination of everything I learned over the past four years, working alongside friends at Ross. You know, I was able to bring in the com boarding community as well and facts that I learned from my fellow uh, Chinese classmates. So overall it was really a really great project and it allowed me to learn a lot about myself and what I want to study in college and uh, after the the entire project I think I've decided to major in international relations and Chinese business and uh, minor in advanced Chinese conversation. So that is now my goal and that the senior project helped me to find that out. So Great, thank you. Any questions about senior projects? Okay, there was just one more thing that you have that the universities are looking for, and I'll just do this quickly. They're looking for you to show them that you're really interested in them. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. Certainly visiting schools is really important. Um, taking an interview if it's offered by an alumni or an admissions person, following that university on social media, and almost every university will ask you, why do you want to go there? And that's something that we work very closely with in the college counseling process to make sure that you know how to answer that question uniquely to that university. Okay. So now I'm sort of to the end of this. I can take us out a screen share so that we can have the chat bar. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, so let me go through some of these questions. There's some good, good ones here. Um, so college recommendations are actually done usually by two of your teachers and then by your college counselor. Um, the college counselor writes sort of the holistic uh, recommendation and the teachers write two academic recommendations. So um, I read all of the recommendations because sometimes I just want to make sure there aren't any grammar errors and that somebody doesn't accidentally say something like, 
well, when this child was in ninth grade, they were really lazy, but now they do great. Okay, <laughs> we don't want to put that in a college rec, so we're pretty careful. And I like to think, because I have such a strong admissions background as well as a college counseling background, that I can bring the admissions perspective to the recommendations. Um, and I have to say, Ross teachers write amazing recommendations. Um, we don't actually do a university fair on our campus because East Hampton High School, which is down the road, does. But we have a lot of colleges visit the school and meet with students. Um, seniors are allowed to go to those, basically no questions asked. Juniors are allowed to go to the spring visits. Um, so we usually have probably somewhere between 40 and 60 colleges and universities on our campus. Um, between the spring of your junior year and the beginning of your senior year. So there's lots of opportunities to meet with college reps and they have a good understanding of Ross. Uh, yes, and then regular universities that appear for admissions. It's a, that's a harder question to answer because one of the things I really love about Ross and I think you've gotten this message is we really work with each child on their passions and their interests and what's the best school for them. So when you look at, um, we will send to you or post um, the schools that this year's class have received admissions, it's all, uh, all over the place and all over the world. And there are amazing art schools. We have accept acceptances at RISD, SCAD, um, my, my Maryland Institute College of Art. We have film schools acceptances. We've had Ivy League acceptances. So it's been a great year. Um, and I'm really proud of the class of 2020. And I should add that a number of them got beautiful scholarships in many ways because of their senior projects. Um, because they, again, helped them stand out and look unique. Um, and that's been a, a very positive um, very positive for us. It's been a good year. Um, and you can see our acceptance lists. Um, Liz, is, Liz is going to send them out to all of the newly accepted students, but it's also, they're posted on our website. And if, it's a little hard to find college counseling on our website, but if you go to upper school, then you'll get a drop, a menu to the side and you can see college counseling there. And there's a lot of resources. A book I wrote is on there and you are welcome to download it and enjoy it. Um, yeah, okay. Any questions? Any other questions? I should say the college to which we've had the highest matriculation has been NYU. I don't, don't know why. <laughs> but over the years, that's the one that's in first place. So does anybody wanna chat a question or ask a question? No. Um, Andy, can you just talk briefly about the grade 11 um, cor course that addresses SAT, ACT prep and college prep? Yes. In grade 11, you all will have what's called the grade level program, GLP. It meets uh, twice a week. Twice a week? Yeah. Each section meets twice a week. And in the beginning of the year, that's a test prep class. So that right built into your day is um, test prep. We work to determine what's best for you individually, the ACT or the SAT. Um, and we use that time to prepare you. Uh, you also have some Saturdays where you take actual SAT tests or ACT tests, and it's a part of the curriculum. I don't know how that's going to change right now. It's something we're looking at very carefully. Um, certainly with this year's juniors, They've been in the test prep class since the fall, um, but their test SATs are currently canceled um, and, uh, up till June. And we'll see what happens with the June's test. Um, and that's, so it's, it's, as I said earlier, very changing, very rapidly changing landscape. But the other part of that, and I think I mentioned this, is where we work with you on your essay, on your common application, on our software, developing your list, that's actually all built into that class. 
so that by the time you go home at the end of your junior year, we are hopeful that you are in really good shape. You've met with your college counselor, they've been assigned to you, and you're ready to take that stress off of the fall of your senior year. Um, India, do you want to speak to that a little? Sure, yeah. I remember, you know, I was worried coming into senior year, but once I kind of got into the groove of everything, I realized that Ross really did prepare me in 11th grade to enter into this year. I, I had everything in order. Everything was organized. I knew where I wanted to apply. I had already worked on essays with, you know, my teacher, my 11th grade English teacher prior to senior year. So I already had the main essay that I was going to be sending out to all the colleges ready to go. Um, and my college counselor was all aligned and we, we were meeting on a regular basis, which really allowed everything to kind of stay within the bounds and not kind of get out of control, which can happen <laughs> during the senior year. I know for a lot of seniors, if you don't start early I, at other schools, you know, there, there's a lot of stress because some just wake up uh, in the September of their senior year and realize that they have to figure out where they want to go to college and, and what they want to major in. But Ross really does help to prepare you to figure, figure all that out beforehand. So it's really fantastic. But even for students that are coming into grade 12, we'll yeah. start working with them before they even come to the school during the summer to, make, to bring them up to speed on the senior project and on the college counseling. Okay, and there were um, two other questions that came in. When do the faculty do recommendations? We strongly encourage the students at the end of their junior year to consider who they're asking for recommendations um, and to ask at least one of their 11th grade teachers. Um, so they usually write them at, at, like at the due date. <laughs> sometimes that's not really true um, we carefully monitor the recommendations go into our software system we know when they go out need to be out to the universities and we stay on top of the faculty the college counselors and Jacqueline my executive assistant stay on top of the recommendations to make sure that everything is done in a timely manner and to the schools and universities in a timely manner so if a child's applying early decision in the fall, those recs are done in the fall. If they're applying early decision two in January, we'll probably give the faculty until early January on them. Um, so it's, it's um, I think it, it works really well. It's seamless. It, it all goes out digitally from the school and we can track everything. So we know what, and you can see it also in our, our software system, either as a student or as a parent. So it's pretty transparent. Um, the next question is, will there be school in person in the fall? Boy, I wish I could answer that. <laughs> um, I'm not even sure about May yet. So we're, we're, um, we are all hopeful that we will have regular on campus in the fall. Um, uh, obviously, I can't promise that, but that is all of our hope and expectation. I'm actually hoping we'll still be able to come back this year. Uh, but I don't know how realistic that is, especially for any international students. Um, and do we take kids on college tours? We do not. We have offered some tour programs um, over Thanksgiving break, and we just offered one for the spring break, but then that didn't happen because everybody had to go home. So there are opportunities, but for the most part, um, sometimes the kids will go by themselves or sometimes their families will come over and they'll go all go together or families take them in the summertime before school or at the end of the junior year after school closes. So um, there are a lot of opportunities for it, but um, we haven't found when we've offered the tours that there's been a very big demand. Okay, any other questions? At all? Well, I hope we're going to see you guys in the fall. I, if you do have some questions, 
please don't hesitate to email. You can email to admissions at ross.org or you can email to me. My email is Andy, A-N-D-I. I think you can see that right there. And it's just Andy at ross.org. Um, and I'll be happy to try to answer your questions. And I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you all for joining today. And again, congratulations on your acceptances. Really excited. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Take Bye, care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, India. Thank you. <laughs>